Hi, I'm back. Did you miss me? Well, I had a little video snafu there. My battery died, but it was the perfect place. So I hope you were able to get the top part of your fence post painted. And now we'll move down to this part. I switched to um, a smaller brush. And it's nice and damp too. I blotted it on my paper towel. And I will go ahead and wet this area. That way I can paint it to match the rest of it. Applying the burnt sienna first as before over the entire area. Yeah, I should know better than to let that go. I should have checked with having made the uh, video on how to paint this with oils. I should have checked to make sure that my battery power was up, but I didn't. Just to kind of let you know we're human too, those of us that teach and we make all kinds of mistakes and get paint where we don't want it and different little things like that. Remember, you've got a little piece of fence down here. And we could also add a little burnt sienna in there. And now to add our burnt umber shading and tinting. As you can see, I'm painting a lot with just the corner of my brush, tucking it down in these places. Throw in a little bit of Payne's Gray here. And I do have some other brushes sitting over here on the side, and I did moisten those before I set them here. That way they're damp, and if I do have any, get paint where I don't want it, then I can wipe it out easily. This is actually the first time that I've ever painted with it by getting the area wet first. Usually I just go with the 10% wet brush. So let's see what would happen if, since this is dry now, if I'd come back with, say, a little bit of a side load of burn umber and maybe streak it with a little burn umber and it's dry. Make sure it's dry before you do something like this. Like I said, we all know what it's like when we forget. Add a little more of the Payne's Gray just because I like that worn ebony kind of a look. And I could add a little bit more of it down into here. A little more sh shadowing. So for now, I am going to call that part done. We will move down now to the pansy. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see that there's kind of a washy, purpley look on here. And then a deeper to purple there. And then we've got some pale yellows. I think the purple has a little bit of a blue cast to it. I'm getting out dioxazine purple and just a dot. But I'm also going to get out some ultramarine blue, again just a dot, so that I can blue it up a little bit. And I will choose a brush that I feel is a comfortable size to fit in these petals. You want to go as big as you can to control it so you have less brush marks, but if you're terribly uncomfortable with it, then it's not going to work good for you. So I dipped my brush in water. I'm going to blot it on the paper towel. 
I think twice. I don't want it real wet this time. And I've got a little bit of the dioxazine purple on the corner of my brush. You can see how intense it is. So for these back two petals here, I am going to come across there with this side load of purple. I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to tickle that edge there. I want it to have a little bit of a washy thin look. Having trouble with this brush. Well, we all know what that's like too. I'm just going to leave that to dry. I can always add more paint, but it's hard to take it off. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to do... I forgot to add my blue. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I stuck tipped into both of the colors. And now I'm going to do the same thing around the edges of the next two petals. wonder if I didn't clean this brush very good last time. Just kind of giving me fits there. We want to keep the purple mostly up here around these edges because we're going to add some white then. I'm still fussing with my brushes. They're just not acting the way I would like them to. So I do like it when I dipped into the blue, the ultramarine blue. Let's make sure that's what I have. Yes, the ultramarine blue and the dioxazine purple both and have a little bit of that on my brush. And I'm going to apply that on these dark areas. And the trick to this, and the hard part about this, is controlling the water. And I am having some trouble today. I have a different, different paper towel that I'm used to, and who knows what. There can be all kinds of reasons for why an area stays wet longer than you're expecting it to, why a brush stays wet longer. Generally, I like how the water works with this brush. I think we'll still be all right with what we're getting here. Now, down here, there is really just a tiny bit of this around the edge, this bottom edge. It doesn't go near as far around as on the other ones. And I have usually done this on canvas. So it does have a different feel to me. I don't have the texture that I'm used to on the canvas. But you're going to have something basically like that. And if you can see on the photo, it looks like that where it's a little bit splotchy and everything, just like I did, even if I didn't do that quite on purpose. I will grab a tiny bit of paint and come over here and put a little bit on my bud. The main thing is you want to keep your paint soft. Sorry about my arm there. I'm going to grab some yellow. And I am using Hansa Yellow Medium. Again, a drop. And these petals up here that I did first are already dry. 
they are very pale. So I am going to need to get out just a really, really, really tiny amount of yellow. So I'm working it into my brush and I'm going to blot my brush again. I don't want there to be much paint. If you look at the photo, it's practically white and it's also very pale on these ones as well. And I'm just going to quickly apply a wash of this color. on the petals where I don't have purple. Now I've got a little bit stronger here for this. And it's turning out pretty. Look at that nice vibrant color we've got going on there. I'm going to come out with just a little bit more paint and I'm going to touch it around these edges. I want those edges to be just a little bit darker, mainly because that's what I see on the photo of my, my reference photo. Wipe the extra paint off of my brush and just soften this just a little bit. Like I said, there's definitely a learning curve to this and I haven't perfected it either. Every time I try it in different conditions, you know, I might have something different happen like I am here. It doesn't mean it doesn't come out pretty, but my water is having a little more trouble with that. And these are my back two petals because of the way he's turned here. So they do have a little more purple on them. We can bleed that down a little bit further. one thing you can keep la adding layers with this and darkening some areas and getting it a little richer. I'm going to add some more yellow to this area because in the photo this part is a lot brighter yellow. The rest of it's very pale. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. And now I move on down on my bubble palette. I'm going to add some greens. I know in the bottle the green gold doesn't maybe look like what I'm going to want, but I have used it before and it, and it does work out really well. It's a beautiful color with the thallow yellow, thallow green yellow. Try a little bit of that. Again, I think I'm going to grab my 10. I do like to use a kind of a big brush. And for the leaves, I'm going to go ahead and dampen them. Just get a, work a little of the water out of my brush that way. And I'm working the green gold into my brush and I'm going to apply this on the lighter areas, which is along the arch and along the top edge of the ripples. I wipe the extra paint out of my brush. Ooh, this might not be quite what I wanted. Well, I have some sap green here. We can throw that in as well. It 
it's always a learning experience. Seems like I use sap green a lot, so I thought, oh, let's try this other color. And it's all a matter of what you would like it to look like. And I don't mind kind of playing with it and trying another color if I didn't like the one that I just used. doesn't hurt anything to put some more layers on. In fact, it gives it some depth. So I think we're good with that leaf. It looks pretty. It goes good with what we've got. Let's throw some green gold on here along the arch, which is bending forward, and on the tops of some of these bends. Wipe the extra paint out of my brush on my paper towel. Yeah, my paper towel is just not grabbing the water like I would like it to. And I brush mixed a little bit of thalo yellow green and sap green together. So I always say in my instructions, you know, practice a little bit until you can get the feel of how you want the water to work for you. A lot of times I use old socks for my paper towel instead. They can hold a lot more water. Oops, I forgot this flip right there. I remembered it when I saw this one. You can see I'm not being overly careful. I kind of like a loose look on some of my paintings. My oil paintings, they tend to be very realistic and very precise. My acrylic paintings, I tend to be a little more impressionistic. I kind of, I just like that style. So with some greens still in my brush, I'm gonna hit it on some of my weeds here and I'm going to pull a few more out. Scruff a little bit on the ground. Pull up some of my weeds. Get some sap green in here so it isn't quite so bright. Scruff a little more ground. Oh, yep, let's catch our stems here. I could switch to a smaller brush, and I will for the calyx because I don't want the green to getting getting out clear out over onto the background. Ooh, too bright. Grab a little more sap green. Isn't it wonderful how these colors just mesh together? They come out so pretty that way. Now we do need to tie all our colors together have some continuity in our painting. And many, many, many years ago, I took a class from Linda Weiss, and she used to say we should pretend that there was a ladybug hopping through our painting wearing goulashes. And it needed to hop from color to color, temperature to temperature, and, and value to value. So that you're, you're, all of these elements could not be too far apart. So I like to pretend that the, the viola is blushing on here if the sun is coming across and it's throwing just a little bit of a blush with the purple. So I'm going to put a few strokes of purple. I'm going to put some on here as well. And out here in my weeds. And as you can see, I'm, I'm not stressing over it. I'm just making some very loose strokes. Pulling a little color. I 
and then pulled a little bit right over on top of my pansy. In my photo, these lines that we inked are actually a dark purple, so you could come back and go over these with a little dark pur with a little of your purple. I really like this green gold. I think I'm going to throw a little bit of that up into here. Yes, I do. I like how that ties all of that together. Maybe a touch of it on here. I'm thinking even a touch of it on my flower. And something that we could do, you know, we created our borders. I did it a little different on this one. It would probably be fun if we took some of our purple here and all I did was just make some marks with the large end. Just throw a little bit of our purple colors, ultramarine blue and dioxazine purple hot here on our corners to pull it all together. I could take the larger brush and stroke some of my greens. I lost, I need a little, another drop of my sap green. Maybe I need to throw some of my browns in there. It just needs to not be quite so bright. But this is something fun that you could play around with. It's going to depend on what your tastes are, what you want to do. I'm going to grab some of the, yeah, I like that better. The burnt umber here, because I still have some of that on my palette. Sometimes I paint this border that I make and sometimes I don't. You can watch for a pen and ink fuchsia with the media fluids in the new in the first issue of 2019 of painting Ezyn. And there I'm doing it on canvas. Now this time I got into a little more of that sallow yellow green. Kind of interesting there. So then I probably better go throw a little bit of that into the other sides. So this will just give you an idea what you can do too. You can play with it. Get this however you want it. Use the colors that you like the best. Maybe you'd like all purple around the edges. Maybe you'd like all brown around the edges so it looks more like a frame. Best way to learn is to give some of these things a try. too wet there. And as you can see I used very small amounts of paint so I really encourage you to get the media fluids and give them a try. Look how gorgeous and vibrant this picture came out. And we had a lot of fun doing it. I might want to look this over and say well you know I need a little purple down here too. 
Let's drag some purple in. I like that. I think that anchors it a little bit. I don't think I need purple everywhere, but I felt like I really needed it down here to help anchor the piece. So thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, uh, just give me a holler. You can find me in the membership members section of the SDP. And happy painting. Bye.